So we are going to record the installation on, of Docker on a Windows 10 box. Just to explain, on Linux and on the Windows servers, you install directly the Docker engine. Obviously, the limitation, if we call it like that, is that on Linux you can only run Linux containers and on Windows you can only run Windows containers because of a kernel of those both technologies. But it could be the case where actually you want to create your own lab where you want to run side by side Linux container and Windows container at the same time. So you can do that on a Windows 10 uh, with the minimum requirement that need to be a professional edition or enterprise edition. You can check the requirement uh, on the Microsoft documentation or on the Docker documentation. In our case, uh, we are going to use our virtual environment. Uh, this is based on VMware workstation right now. So we need to do a couple of extra steps to configure our environment to run it. And the first of it is actually to enable the nested virtualization on the machine. That's because on Windows, the underlying technologies that uh, we will use to run Linux containers will be based on Hyper-V and we need actually to install it. So since we are already in a virtual environment, we need to actually to enable this technology called nested virtualization. So to do so, we go in the settings of the virtual machine, choose the processor and enable the virtualization for the machine. Uh, just a note, this means that we expect that the same options are pre-enabled in the BIOS of your physical machine. So in case, just check the BIOS of the machine to be sure that actually the Intel virtualization, in case you have an Intel uh, processor, the AMD virtualization is enabled at BIOS level. We click OK, and then we start the machine. So we restarted the machine, um, so the nested virtualization is ready. Now we are ready actually to install um, Docker on a Windows 10 box. As I said before, the installation of Docker on the Windows 10 box is different from uh, a Windows server because it allows us to use Linux container and Windows container uh, side by side. That is really useful for uh, lab environment, development environment. So to do so, it's pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Uh, we point directly to the store uh, of docker.com that is where actually all the con certified containers are located. This is the place where actually uh, one identity containers, certified one identity containers will be uh, placed as well. And um, in a pretty easy way, we just need to actually download it. Um, just to mention it, this is the page. You can always choose the flavor you prefer. If the stable channel or eventually the, the edge channel. The difference is that the stable channel is, it will be updated uh, once per quarter, while the edge channel usually is updated once per month. So we will go for the uh, stable channel, uh, click basically, it will download basically this file. Uh, and once the file is uh, downloaded, then we will be in a position actually to run it. So we downloaded the Docker stable C version. We can actually see there that we got the installer. We double click that and we simply run it. So what will happen um, in this case? As you can see, it's going to unpackaging files, all the files actually that needed to run a Docker file. It will take care of installing the Docker file. And once it's that, we will restart the machine a couple of times um, to, to make it uh, the entire installation procedure successful. So as you can see, that's asking me to close and log out. That's what we're going to do. It's signing out. You see that the Docker for Windows icon appears. That actually does, um, this. there will appear also an icon on the system tray to tell us actually that it is, that actually tell us that Docker is starting. So we're waiting for that. Docker will check if Hyper-V and the containers feature on the machine are set up. Uh, if not, it will ask us if we want to actually do that and we click OK. The computer will restart automatically. Okay, so we restarted the machine. Uh, we will again, as you see that 
the whale, the docker is actually starting. Uh, so if then this goes right, what we expect is just to have a, a pop-up that says uh, docker is running, you can actually start in using. Uh, and eventually you have to log in in the docker app if you want actually to use your own uh, images. Okay, so as you can see, basically the pop-up come in and says docker is running, uh, the way stop it to actually loading. So now basically we're in a position to um, open a PowerShell or a command prompt, exactly the same. And we are there, we can actually see that docker is there. And as before we check the version, so the same version we installed uh, on the other machines. And again, let's try um, a simple command. This time is like, um, I think this, this time we actually say, ask it, okay, give me more info on Docker. What kind of Docker actually I'm running? And as you can see, actually the OS type is Linux. So we are inside the Docker for Linux version right now. Now, well, actually it's running because we are on a Windows box right now. So let's see a couple of details more. When the Docker whale well actually was loading, what happened is that he installed Hyper-V Hyper -V in this machine. And in Hyper-V actually, what happened is that he created a specific virtual machine based on Linux that is not accessible, that act as a, act as a proxy. And that's where your contain, Linux container lives when you run it on Windows 10. That's why it's different from the server. Um, so this machine actually can be managed directly from the whale, the settings of Docker for Windows. So if I right click on the, on the whale, then I will see that I have uh, multiple commands. Uh, the most important for me right now is settings. Well, actually I can change the settings of my Linux container. So this is what you see when you are on Linux version. So for example, you can um, mount your drives into a Docker Linux container so you can exchange data between one and another. Uh, you can change actually the behavior of this machine. The memory in the CPU is based on the your box memory and machine. So if your box has, for example, in this case, I think is uh, four gigs, RAM, um, usually the maximum is two gigs to allow the, your, your Windows box to still running. So if you if you increase the, the memory, obviously you have more options. Um, you have a subnet network, you have not that network has been created for you where the, actually your container lives. So this IP and all these IP are reachable from, from your machine. Eventually if you are behind the proxy and your container need to connect to internet, even just to do updates and etc. You can use it that, and you can eventually change the, the daemon to connect or use specific features. And as well, you have the dinos and feedback. If you want to actually have, if you have issues, you can actually interact with Docker itself, or you can reset your entire installation or restart Docker for that. Now let's do a couple of things more. So I said we are in the, um, um, we're in a Docker for Linux. So if we issue the command we used to see in, uh, we already seen in, uh, in Linux, then let's say that, let's see if it runs. So docker run dash it dash dash rm hello world. So what I expect again is that docker run, please docker run a container for me in interactive mode, show me what the container is doing and eventually let me interact with the container. Dash dash rm, remove this container once his, his job has been done. So once it's finished, if I have nothing that is running, exit from the container, remove the container from my local uh, disk. And pull, if it doesn't exist locally, a container is called hello world. So connect to the Docker hub, the Docker repo, public repositories, search for the hello world image and if it's not already in this machine please download it so i will basically do that so it can find local image so it actually is pulling that then once it's pulled 
run the container, create a container. This container has done this this operation and it out. Again, as before, I want to see if actually the container is still running. No. Docker PS show me every container that actually is running on this machine. Let me check if the container is in there. There's nothing. Let me check if there's image downloaded and the image hello world is there. They show me it actually has a specific ID and the size. This is a Linux native Linux image. I'm going to remove this image with the RMI, remove image and giving the ID of image from my store. And again, he untagged the image because I can have multiple tags for the image and he deleted the layers used by this image on my list to free up these resources. Now, without actually get out from the PowerShell, we will go to the whale and this time we will say, please switch to Windows containers. So the whale actually is switching you can do that by command line as well, but that is way it's finished. You said, OK, you're ready to run. So I'm going to do Docker info as before issue. And this time you see that it's a little bit different. And the host type is Windows. And this is quite important because it means that now we are on a Windows kernel uh, that is directly natively linked to my OS. So it's not using an app, but actually is working right now. So this means again that if I do previous command, I expect a different results. Let's see what it does. Doc and run dash it dash rm l word. It cannot find the image locally as before because we removed it. It's actually pulling. Please notice as the size of this image. We issue the same command. When we were in Linux, it was really a teeny image. It was like a little bit more than 2K uh, kilobytes. But in this case, it's actually downloaded a bigger image. Why is that? Because we are on the Windows container. So the image is based on the Windows kernel. And for this reason, it need to be a little bit um, bigger than, than the Linux images. But you see, I'm using exactly the same command. This means that if the image is compliant, it supports multi-architecture. I don't need to actually um, look for the OS base that I need to pull. I simply issue the command and then they will come out. Um, if instead uh, the, the image doesn't exist for multi arc it will throw an error and say to me, I'm sorry, you cannot do that. And we will do that in, in a minute. Uh, so the image has been downloaded correctly. Now it's going to expand to extract the image. Once the image is extracted, then it will create the container as before and use it as before. You said actually in the in Windows version, um, change the colors but that's because here it was getting in an interactive mode into the image it went for the usual text guide that comes from the organ then it came out from from the image so now you actually if we um, check again uh, we can say it's docker ps let me show you if there's something that is running here and there's nothing docker ps dash a is there any container, even stop a container on my machine? No, because quickly remove the images. Please show me if there are any images on this box. And oh, that has an image. The latest version is the tag is one gigabytes of sites. And it was created only 30 hours ago. It's auto updated and it's called it error word. And as before, I don't need this image anymore. So I'm going to remove it using his unique ID. So if there are multiple tags, I will eventually remove all the tags altogether. And you will see that the difference between this image on tag, uh, this image removal and the other one on Linux, that will be probably that the, the layers are a little bit uh, more than the Linux one. If you remember, there were only two layers in uh, in window in Linux, and probably we'll have something around four layers in in, in Windows. That 
is untag he untagged the hello world with latest and then he deleted all, all the layers there and now basically with that we are ready to start and, and, and use docker if i want to come back to linux all i have to do is just go there switch linux container again and then i'm again in the, in the linux world uh, pretty easy pretty simple to use it and to create a lab for your own to play with actually uh, the images no matter if they are linux or windows